Welcome to Gabversity, where facts kicked feelings butt. And let us move on and begin. So, what we have is a step function. And this step, I don't know if this is going to work. It may or may not. If it does not, I might have to use a magnifying glass. There we go. So, we have a random needle. Is this going to... Oh, this is the worst freaking app to use. I swear to do mathematics. Got to figure out a way to do this. Maybe... No, that's... I don't know. Let's try this. Where the hell is the pen? Wait, what? What? Oh, there it is. All right. Can't see what I'm doing. All right, now let me try flip it again. Oh, I'm sorry. This is so bad. All right, maybe this will work. All right, so what we have... Hey, Sab Sab. You should do it through computer. Yeah, I should. Absolutely. There's a lot of things I should do in life. Hey, Kevborn's back. Hey, hey. All right, so we have the... We have a semicircle. Hello, Sab Sab. And on the top of the semicircle, we have a needle. And we knock the needle... And the needle will fall anywhere in this angle. And that is, it will either be upright or it will fall flat. It'll be a straight to press script. Yeah, I did it once. Um, and uh, But to do the mathematics, yeah, maybe I could do share my screen and then do the maths on the screen, actually write on the screen using my finger or something. Or get my pen working again. Yeah. Well, we'll see how we go. If I can get more Patreon subscribers, then I can afford to do all this stuff. Otherwise, I'm still going to have to work at nights. Um, all right. Get some graphing app. Yeah, good idea. All right. So the probability of the angle being between 0 and pi, which is 90. So we know that 90 degrees equals, equals pi. Okay. So the possibility of theta, okay, equaling a which is some random angle is when it's between zero less than theta which is the angle pi and zero otherwise all right so in other words the angle can't be more than 90 degrees and it can't be less than zero obviously not in this universe anyway so now what we're going to do, we have to normalize it so we can figure out what A is, right? And we've done this in other courses. So to normalize it, we are going to say that the integral from the lowest possible angle to the highest possible angle, rho of theta, right? I knew we'd get less people when it comes to pure maths, uh, but uh, it'll be interesting. It doesn't matter, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to fly through it. D theta equals 1, right? So what we've done is, as we said, we've normalized it. So we've said there's a 100% chance of finding the angle between the lowest angle and the highest possible angle. And we know that the lowest is 0, the lowest is 0, and the highest is pi, because it's 0 everywhere else. All right, so which implies that the integral from 0 to pi of... A, uh, D theta equals 1, okay, and to integrate that, the integral of P theta, right, which implies that A equals 1 over pi. All right. Now, why is that the case? Because, quite simply, a d theta, let me do the long way for you, just quickly. Okay. So, this here implies that a from 0 to pi of d theta equals 1, and that implies that a, and the integral of d theta is just theta, right? So we have theta from 0 to pi equals 1, all right? So that just means 
right? That just means that we have A outside of theta when theta is equal to pi minus A outside of theta when theta is equal to zero, equal one. Well, when theta is equal to zero, that's just zero. That's just zero. And that's when that's pi, that becomes A pi. So therefore, A pi equals one. And therefore, pi equals one over A, which implies, of course, that A equals one over pi. And that's just basic algebra, right? Because A times pi equals one. So A has to be one on pi, because one on pi by pi equals one. Right? And that's how we got that equals that a equals one on pi so that's all we've done right so now we want to get the statistics of the distribution which we did in the last the last one all the examples we did right so what we want we want the average of theta right that's the first thing we want so the average of theta okay is going to equal one over pi outside the integral from zero to pi right if anyone's done university maths, this doesn't this look familiar to you? Looks like the um, Fourier Fourier distribution. Um, all right, so of theta d theta, all right, and let's let's integrate this. So if we integrate that, we're going to get which equals one over pi. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's right. All right, and that's going to be theta squared on 2, okay? So that's theta squared over 2 from 0 to pi, right? And so that, that's going to be pi squared over 2 over pi, which equals pi squared over pi, that, which, and one pi cancels out with the other, and so you're just going to have pi over 2. So now we know the average is pi over 2, which is exactly what you'd expect, because if I show you the needle... Here's the needle, right? It's randomly going to be between 90 degrees and 0 degrees. So if you do it enough times, the average is going to be halfway. It's like if you flip a coin and you get heads and tails, right? Over time, you're going to get half heads and half tails. So, you know, the average will be that. Okay, now what we want is the variance, 45 degrees, exactly. Now we want the variance. So the variance, okay, is that. Okay, and remember the, the variance is uh, now we're just going to do it again. So now we're going to go 1 over pi integral from 0 to pi, okay, just like before. But now we're chucking in uh, x, which is theta squared. So sorry, we've got theta squared d theta, okay? And to integrate that, we are going to say that that equals 1 over pi and then uh, theta cubed over 3 zero to pi right and we just that zero in there is just going to be zero so we don't have to worry about that pi in there is pi cubed over three so pi cubed over three times one over pi because that's the one over pi there and one of them cancels out so that's just going to be pi squared over three let's see if i'm right uh yes i'm right that's good okay so now so now we've got so we've got the variance, which is that. Okay. And we've got the average, which is that. Okay, so now we've got those. Okay, so we can write them down. So we've got the variance, which equals pi over two. And we've got sorry, not the variance, the, the mean. And then the variance is gonna be pi squared over three. And now what we want is the standard deviation at a quarter by four. Well done, big Rob. Big Rob is the man. Alrighty, so let's go with, sorry, let us do standard deviation. I'm trying to write around the phone. It's not really working. Okay, what we do is we want that answer minus that answer and square root it. So we want pi squared over 3 minus pi over 2, all squared, and we square root that. Okay, so that's going to be um, pi squared over 3 minus pi squared over 4, all square rooted, okay, which 
is, that's going to be the same as 4 pi squared over 12 minus 3 pi squared over 12, which is pi squared over 12. Okay, and we want the square root of that, uh, which is um, pi, uh, all square rooted, sorry. So that means we want pi over the square root of 12. But the square root of 12 is 2 root 3. Uh, 2 root 3. So pi over 2 root 3 is the standard deviation, which is very interesting. That means if you take the angle, that just means that if you take the average, which is halfway, most of the answers will be between pi over root 12 and pi over root 12 on each side. That's what we're saying here. So if we took a distribution, a normal distribution, right, this is what it would look like. Right? And the average would be 45 degrees. Right, 45 degrees is pi over 2. And the standard deviation, right? hey, Amy's back. The standard deviation would be pi over root 3. So this is pi over 2 root 3, sorry. Pi over 2 root 3 this way and pi over 2 root 3 this way. Okay, And that means that 86% of the time you will find the answer within this standard deviation. All right. And that comes back to, as I was saying in the last one, I won't explain it because I said I wouldn't do that. But if you look at the last lecture, you will understand what we're saying. All right, let's keep going. We now have all of that. So now we want to split it up so that we can analogize and get the space and time components of these. All right. So we want the sine theta. Right. We want the average of the sine theta. Now, if... People remember, right, if a needle here is, I'm looking at it side on. If we're looking at it side on, right, that's the semicircle, right, side on. Here's the needle, and the needle can fall, right? So let's say the needle lands here, right? If the needle lands here, we've got the sine component and the cos component, right? So we've got the vertical and the horizontal component. So sine theta, and here is theta. So sine, as you guys remember, is opposite over uh, hypotenuse, and... So therefore, we've got the opposite over hypotenuse ratio, right? Cool bananas. Okay. So sine theta, it's going to be 1 over pi integral from 0 to pi, because that includes all possible locations, uh, of sine theta d theta. Okay. And let's integrate that. So that's going to be integral of sine theta is negative cos theta. So it's going to be negative cos. So we've got 1 over pi outside. Negative cos theta. Um, and then we've got 0 and pi. I really want some pi now. <laughs> now I want some pi. Damn you. <laughs> Which equals 1 over pi outside of negative cos pi minus negative cos zero. Right. Now, what do we know? Well, we know that cos of pi is zero and cos of zero is one. So that's going to be negative one minus negative one. That's just going to be one. And hold on a sec. Cos of pi is not z zero. Cos of pi... What if I stuffed something up? What have I stuffed up? Have I made a mistake somewhere? What have I done? You love apple pie. 0.8325. Yeah, 2 divided by... Yeah, you're actually right, actually. It is 0.8325. But the, the real answer... I've done something wrong. I know, because I know in my head it's 2 over pi. The answer is 2 over pi. I know that, because I've done this before. But... I've done something wrong here. Negative cos pi. Um, cos of 0 is 1. Oh, hold on a sec. Cos of 180 is 1. Cos of pi is 0. I've made a mistake somewhere. Definitely made a mistake. Hmm. What 
What have I done wrong? I've made a mistake somewhere here. Damn it. We didn't notice. <laughs> that's not good. If you're not noticing, that's, I'm not doing a good job. <laughs> Step three. Yeah, I've made a mistake here somewhere. The square root of pi. Hmm. You're saying the square root of pi. That's all right. I mean, like, we all make a mistake. Oh, yeah, we make mistakes all the time, but it just pisses me off that I, that I can't see it. Um, thanks, my dear. That should be 1. Minus cos of pi should be 1. Well, I, 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 should, I don't use a calculator anymore. What's cos of 90, if anyone knows? Does anyone know what cos of 90? Cos of 90 should be 0. What have I done? Hmm. Oh, that's really annoying me now. I can't figure it out. The answer is 2 over pi. But you're right, the answer... Yeah, it is 0. I thought it was 0. Cos of pi is 0. 0 minus minus cos of 0 should be 1. 1 by that equals 1 over pi. Why is the answer 2 over pi? That's bothering me. Oh, well, correct, 0. So I've... Hmm. Yeah, I can't see what I've done. Step two, maybe. Yeah, it could be step two. Say so one over pi minus cos theta, because the derivative of minus cos theta is sine theta, which is there. Unless, unless I'm correct, sine theta d theta. Hmm. You have an extra outside the brackets. Well, that one needs to be there because of that. And that's cos theta, the derivative of cos theta is sine theta, so that's correct. It is zero to pi, so that's correct. And then that is that, so that's correct. The whole thing is correct. I don't know what I've done wrong. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what I've done wrong there. I don't know how that should... I'm getting 1 over pi, but it says 2 over pi. But anyway, I've made a mistake somewhere. I'll come back to it and I'll talk about it on my next lecture. <laughs> All right, next one is cos of theta. Um, what's, the bet that, what's the bet that the actual teacher is wrong? That could, that could actually happen. Let me check. Maybe the teacher's wrong. Anyway, I'll come back to it. You know what I mean? If I wasn't on a lecture, I'd freaking stick on it until I found it because I'm a stubborn bastard. Um, all righty, where are we? Now let's do cos. Why in step three is is and and not still that? This one. Uh, but, well, that might be where the mistake is because basically you've this here means that you put pi into there and then you put zero, but you've got to subtract. So first you put pi and then... You, Ah, I see what I've done. No, no, I haven't. No, I haven't. Minus cos pi. No, I don't know what I've done. That looks all correct. I'm missing something. I'll look at it later. I don't want to waste your time. I'll look at it later. All right. So cos theta equals 1 over pi outside the integral from 0 to um, pi. Let's see. Maybe with this one I can see it. Cos theta d theta right, maybe i'll find the mistake when i do this one so now i'm doing cos instead of pi well the integral of cos theta is sine theta minus should be outside parentheses maybe that's the case too yeah we all make mistakes it's okay oh no i love making mistakes as long as i can find the answer and um, what i'm going to do Actually, actually, now that you guys are here, there's a website called Wolfram Alpha, W-O-L-P-H-R-A-M, Alpha. If you go to Wolfram Alpha, you can actually type in the question. This is the question. If you put this in, 1 over pi outside the integral from 0 to pi of sine theta d theta and see what the answer is. I might do that, actually. Actually, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this question and then I'm going to go do it. I'll do it in front of you. Alrighty, so we've got here, um, that's sine theta, so that's going to be 1 over pi um, outside of 
sine theta. Does it go through the steps to... Yeah, it is. It's really good. It goes through... You have to pay to go through the steps, um, or otherwise you just get the answer. But it's freaking amazing. I can't wait for that to be put into our brains. <laughs> Zero to pi, which equals... Well, sine of pi is zero, sine of zero is zero. Sine of pi should be one. See, I'm getting this now. I'm getting one over pi. Because sine of 90 should be one. No. And he's getting zero. All right, I have to go look it up. Let's go. That's enough exercise. I've done 270 calories. All right. We're going to have to go look this up, my friends. Unfortunately, it has come time to look this up. Let's go get this laptop. Because this is now driving me crazy. Alrighty. Let's pull out our laptop. Welcome back. Alrighty. We are going to solve this freaking problem. How are there 24 people? Why are there 24 people here watching us solve this problem? Some answers we have to seek. When you seek, you shall find, right? Alrighty. Oh, I thoroughly enjoy all of your scopes. Well, I love that. Ah, oh, you just invited. That's what I was. And then they drop again. <laughs> and they're like, this is crap. Why are we watching this? Uh, I I, uh, I love that you love them. That's It says more about you. I'm going to show it to you right now, actually. And then you will see it live and learn about it. It's one of the best sites ever. Want a summit peak harder to conquer than Mount Everest? No, I don't, actually. Um, come on. Open, open. Here we go. Let me just put in my password. Okay. Let's do it. So now we're going to go to Wolfram. Alpha. <laughs> Alrighty, here we are. So that's the site here. Use a magnifying glass. If you can see that, it's really blurry, isn't it? Actually, you can sort of see that, right? It's there. It is. Freaking periscope, man. Seriously. W o l f r a m a l p h a dot com. Wolframalpha dot com. All right, let's do this. So what we want, saying open on scope, put your pen or finger close to it. Ah, got you, got what you're saying. Okay, thank you for that. I will do that. So uh, we want one over pi times integral from zero to pi of sine x dx. I just, instead of putting theta, I put x, same deal. Now let's see if it's actually popped up. Bugger, it is 2 over pi. Damn you. <laughs> so I am doing something wrong. All right, now let's see cos x. All right. <laughs> cos x dx equals zero. Damn it! You're an ET for me. Oh, that's awesome. Seems like cheating. It is like cheating. It is exactly like cheating. It, that's what scientists actually do. When they actually become scientists, they never actually do the work anymore. They just use computers. All right. So now we've got to figure out where the hell we went We're wrong. And it's saying here, see, you can get the step-by-step -step solution. But I think I haven't paid for it, so I can't get it, which really sucks. There you go. Now the computer's doing it for you. To see all the steps, go pro. We have the first section. <laughs> that really sucks. And I now, but what I can do is I can go through each step that I did. You know this app. Ah, very cool. So what I'm going to do is let us find the sign of the negative cos x um, integral yeah you can scan the question it shows all the steps oh you know another one 
integral of sine x dx. Let's have a look at this. Uh, I should be right. Negative cos x. Okay, so that's right. We got that, negative cos x. So now what we've got to do is we have to say negative cos of pi. Maybe that's where I made the mistake. And result... Ah, that's where I made the mistake. Negative cos of pi is 1. I thought it was 0. Why the hell is it 1? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You want to know where the problem was? You want to know where the problem was? You are not going to believe where the problem was. What a retard. This is why I'm called the retarded genius. Let me tell you, let me tell you where the problem was. I'll show you in a sec. Yeah. Oh. Let me show you where the damn problem was. Ah. So I'm a freaking spastic. Jeez. All right, exercise bike on again. What did you just drink out of? You ain't a retard. <laughs> I drank out of the brie, it's called a brie, which is, well, I guess it's a Lebanese thing. Yeah, even though in Lebanon they don't use it anymore because, you know, they're all advanced now. We are, we are class. We don't use this anymore, Gab Gabriel. Freaking hell. All right, let me show you why I'm a retard. Because... I'm about to draw it for you. Because here is the semicircle. And I completely misread the question. Here is the semicircle. All right. Here is the needle. And the needle can go anywhere along here. Can go here, can go here. All right, when it's flat this way, that's zero degrees. When it's flat, honey, we accept you. Likewise, my dear, with the cute smile. When it falls here, that's 180 degrees, which equals pi. I thought pi was 90 degrees because I'm a moron. What a moron. It's like the dumbest possible mistake you could make. 180 degrees equals pi. <laughs> so therefore, the average is pi on 2, which is 90 degrees. That was it. Oh, Jesus. All right. So therefore, oops. Therefore, when cos of pi is cos of 180 degrees, which equals 1. So... Uh, cos of pi is minus 1, and minus cos of pi is 1. So that's 1 minus minus 1, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2. 2 times that is 2 over pi. Would you look at that? Now, sine of 0, that's wrong, because sine of pi is sine of 180, which is 0. Sine of 0 is 0, because cos 90. That's exactly right. So the whole time, <laughs> the, the whole freaking time in my head, I was saying that pi was 90 degrees. It's like the dumbest mistake you could make. And I just, the whole way through it was working until right at the end. So that's really good. Uh, I'm glad that we solved that problem. That's freaking awesome. All right. So now we're going to find the variance. And now we should be able to do it <laughs> now, now that we know what the hell we're doing. <laughs> it was a simple angular fart. <laughs> angular fart. When I upload this to YouTube... Yeah, it's good to know that I'm actually still human. So when I when I up, can you scope before it's too late? Amy, you got to go. <laughs> Finding solutions is wonderful. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload this to YouTube and in the description, I'm going to say <laughs> that I was retarded. I know nothing about maths. I thought pie was something you eat. 
Oh, there you go. 3.1415. Bingo. All right. Well, for those who know nothing about maths, I would say, Amy, don't be shy if you have to go, as much as I love having you guys here. But I'm going to keep flying through this mathematics. I've still got another eight pages to go. I might not even finish them. Okay, so now we want the variance. Max is trolling you. Okay. Ah, oh, I didn't realize that people get trolls. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry about that. I, I, um, I was just reading what's his name's on Art of the Troll. Uh, bring it on. We can take it. <laughs> All right. Go, Karen. Karen, man, she's a warrior. Folk music. <laughs> oh, you're laughing at folk. All right. So now we want the variance of cos. So cos squared theta. This is now the variance, right? If you remember, that was the the variance was part of the standard deviation. So that equals 1 over pi of the integral from 0 to pi, which is 180 degrees, of cos squared theta d theta. I'm not trolling, lol. Um, all right, and the integral of this, this one's going to be a bit tricky, and this one is going to test my math skills, because I haven't done this in a year. I haven't done maths in a year, so uh, maybe I should have practiced first. Um, all right, so that equals 1 over pi, and the integral of cos squared is, your brain needs to rest. Uh, let me think about this. The integral of cos squared, hmm, I could do a substitution, actually. I could say, I haven't done this, I haven't done maths in a year, so I'm just trying to, let cos squared theta equal x and so therefore 2 cos theta equals dx d theta hmm no that's not going to work all right so what we do is we could say cos squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta now that's that's actually a rule in trigonometry right trigonometry 1 minus sine squared theta is cos squared theta. All right. So then let x equal 1 minus sine squared theta. And so therefore dx, you dropped out a trick, equals uh, No, that's actually wrong. It's not 2 cos theta anyway. That was a mistake. This guy's brilliant. Thanks for the share. Oh, I was trying to be brilliant. I don't know if I'm doing very well. Um, minus sine squared theta, which will be, that's going to be zero, and that's going to be minus two sine squared theta. No, sorry, minus, minus two sine theta. Oh, come on, Gabs. It's been a year, but you can get there. <laughs> Um, let's think, 2 sine squared theta, cos squared theta, cos squared theta, no, it's just cos theta, so sine theta, cos theta, minus 2 sine theta, cos theta, that's not going to work either, hmm, let me think of another option, I could do integration by parts, it's basic differential calculus, yeah, that's differential, I'm trying to do integration, which is backwards, so I'm trying to find the integral of cos squared theta, um, which is really starting to bother me. I'm going to have to go back to Wolfram again and find the answer. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I feel so dumb. Oh, I'm not even following my own work. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on. Oh, my God. Um, Jesus. Cos squared theta. Think, Gabby. Think, think, think. Cos squared theta. One, one, two, it was cos squared theta. All right. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say, I'm going to do integration by parts. Rich.com. Go rich. At least we've got one person following, probably ahead of me. 1 minus cos 2 theta half. Yeah. Well done. Let me, let me check half 1 minus cos 2 theta. You're saying that, ah, that's right. It's remembering the formula symbol that it says them is important for the part for now. Yeah. So you're saying that 1 minus cos 2 theta, half of that is the same as that. Gotcha. 
they're actually the same, and then you can integrate that. You're a genius. Thank you very much for reminding me. So it's a double angle formula. Yes, you're exactly right, my friend. Thank you for remembering. You jog my memory. You're a legend. All right, so we have 1 over pi integral from 0 to pi of cos squared theta d theta equals 1 over pi integral of 0 to pi of... Um, uh, times 1 over 2 of 1 minus cos 2 theta d theta. Excellent. And that equals 1 over 2 pi outside of theta um, minus should be a half sine 2 theta from 0 to pi. Let's see if I'm right on that one. Derive that. Sine minus that is minus cos to cancel out. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so then, which equals, um, are you actually working out right now? Yes. Oh, yeah, I'm exercising. I'm pedaling as I'm doing this. <laughs> Keep talking math to me. All right, so let's firstly chuck in the pi. So that's going to be 1 over 2 and sine of 2 pi is 0, and then if we put 0 at 0, so 1 over 2, you're too funny. And the answer is correct, is it? Yes, it's 1 over 2. Excellent, we got it. Thank you to Cass, you legend, you figured it out. So now we know that a half is the variance for the cos component. He's like Superman. I'm like a retarded Superman. All right, so now... What we want is the probability density of x. So the probability density of x, right, the location of, of the actual needle on the scale, the formula for that is 1 over pi outside of the square root of r squared minus x squared. Okay, so this one. Basically, this is a mathematical description of finding the probability of locating the actual particle, right? Or, or in this case, the needle on the graph. So x squared, x is the, the location, r is the radius, right? And the square root of that, and multiply by pi, and 1 divided by all of that will give us that. And that is brilliant, that works. So, I take retarded Superman over my x all day. <laughs> Oh man, we all have those stories, I think. So now we want to get x, which is the location. So x, right? That's the average location. <laughs> oh man, hey, Helen, hey Helen. Um, all right. So x, the average of x, is the integral from minus r to r. All right. So minus r to r because the radius, right, is r. So the radius of this semicircle. Okay, that's r, and here is minus r. Hey, hey. All right, so we want the location of x, because x, x, right, can be anywhere, anywhere in here, after the, your gifted comment. All right, so what are we doing now? We want to say that it is x by rho dx, x by rho of x, dx. Okay, that's quite simple. So basically, bra minus both sides. Uh, is it? I've got minus r on one side and r on the other to give us, because x can be located anywhere in that radius. I think I, if I understood you. <laughs> hey, hey. Oh, yes, legend. Um, all right, so that here that's rho of x, which is this equation, right? Rho of x is the probability density. So we have the location times the probability density, and we want the area of that. And in other words, the area, and that equals zero. Okay? That means that the average location is at zero. All right? And this is zero right here. So this is zero. Because that's r, and that's minus r, and that's zero. So the average location of x is along this line, which is exactly what we expected. Where's the work function? The work function is in the city after Christmas. Yeah, pretty anticlimactic because the average of the needle is always in the middle, right? Cancel right side. 
Yes, this is true because it's an even function. You're brilliant. Well done. I like this guy. <laughs> it's like 10 steps ahead. All right. So now we want the variance. And remember, the variance is going to tell us around the average where to find the particle. So let's go x squared, which is the variance. Okay. <laughs> Oh, really? You're being too modest. <laughs> or you did you just fluke that answer? <laughs> um, all right. And that is going to equal R squared on 2, which is exactly what we expected. Because if you look at the original, right? Where are we? Where's the original one? Because these are all still correct. What we had here is the variance was pi squared over 3. This one's r squared on 2 because it's an extra dimension. Because before it was just the needle, but now with x it can be anywhere along the needle. Because you're the writer, I'm the audience. <laughs> the audience makes it better, man. We're nothing without the audience. Seriously. Alright, that's pretty cool. That's sorted. Now we want 3 out of 3. That's just people asking questions. Is there anything you don't do? And I thought x plus 0 equals... Delta love. Do you offer private lessons? I do, actually. I used to, before I got onto Periscope, I had so many people on waiting lists just in Sydney. Um, and it freaked me out, so I stopped doing it. Um, okay. Probability and calculus. Probability density in this application. Okay. We placed a needle of length x less than 1 on paper in such a way that it was perpendicular to the line. Such a needle would cover a fraction. Thus the probability of the line will cross specially drop needle is x over 1, blah, blah, blah. Okay. All right, these ones are pretty simple. I'm going to skip this one. which is pretty awesome. So basically this one here is calculating the probability of a needle crossing a line if you drop it on a paper um, and the needle is really short compared to the to the paper. That's pretty cool. And the probability is approximately 0.6366, so 63.5%. Put the needle on the record. You'd make a great bookmaker, sir. Oh, thank you very much. I actually have a book coming out if you want to pre-order a copy. We have... I think we've, we need to get to 15000 to get the book released. And in the last two months, we've raised 2500 bucks. <laughs> Amy, you've got to be careful, man, <laughs> getting people. All right, here we go. So the next one is uh, the Schrodinger equation. And what we want here is derive an interesting quantity called the probability current. Probabilistic interpretation of the wave function of probability of a particle being between A and B. The rate of change of this probability can be expressed in terms of spatial derivatives using the Schrodinger equation. We get, find probability, we can get a rate of change of probability. Interesting. That's pretty freaky. That's actually pretty freaky. All right, so... The next thing we're looking at is the probability current. And that is the rate of change of the probability to make a time machine. Well, you can go into the future. That's pretty easy. It happens all the time. Um, in fact, uh, using a cesium clock, um, humans have already done that. I would look up, so I don't get too diverted, I would look up... Um, <laughs> That goes to the ooh, that's a that's a that's a hard one. That goes to the past. You reckon it's possible? Yeah, I don't I don't think so. I don't I don't see it happening. Simulated universes. You could you could go to the past, but it would be a different past. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be our past. It would be it would be an alternate timeline, and then it, then it would work possibly. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> the rate of change of probability, probability current. Thank you, Supernova. Always kiss me on track. He's mad. He's awesome. He's my referee. <laughs> Night, handsome. Sorry for trolling you, but you can't blame me. Smarts are so damn hot. <laughs> all right, Karen, you have a beautiful rest. Always a pleasure to see you. That resulted in our timeline. 
Well, yeah, but by doing that, it wouldn't be our timeline anymore, right? Because in this timeline, you haven't gone back to the past for the simulation. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. That, that, I, I would definitely not be surprised. Some black hole could do. She looks at the church. Ah, oh, have fun at church. All righty. So, you're in the future from my perspective in Cali. Yes, that's very true. <laughs> very true. Um, all righty. So, let's do this. The probability... Um, what do we got here? Probability current, which means the pr the probability changing over time of finding a particle somewhere. So let's say that we have a room. Here is the room. And all right. And the particle starts off here and sort of goes along the room. Now, every time you look for the particle, there's always a chance of finding it somewhere. So maybe maybe at 5 p.m., at 5 p.m., the chance of finding it here is higher than here. But maybe at 7 p.m., the chance of finding it here is higher than here. So the probability over time changes, and that's called the probability current. Probability current you can also support me at patreon.com forward slash gabsmacked and it's a dollar Australian a month which is like 70 cents and then and then you will get a lot of private videos um, not any dirty ones but just private videos where I talk about some crazy topics that might be not too politically correct I talk about weird things and, you know, slave reparations and you wouldn't look for the particle. <laughs> Alrighty. <clears throat> that's the one. Do you believe in free will? No, I do not. Uh, that's a very good question. You're a deep thinker, Mr. Murphy. <laughs> good. Perhaps dust particle on the floor. <laughs> Alien island. He's funny. You're a funny guy. I like that. Uh, all right. You're a determinist. Okay. Um, well, yeah, we live in a universe of causality. So, yeah, that's, I'm with you on that. All right. So what we want is the probability changing over time. So we want PAB is the integral from A to B of the wave function. Uh, I think that's the wave function conjugate by the wave function absolute value dx. Yeah, I talk about stuff like free will. Um, I talk about um, difference uh, in, you know, the illusion of differences in races and what that means and the origins of, you know, lots of awesome topics that really you can't get into talking about different aspects of religion, the dimensions of it and the good and bad components and the idea of belief and, yeah, I think a few times I played the piano, but uh, you don't need that. You you can play the piano for us. <laughs> All right. So the what we get as the answer is we get j of x t, and that's obviously going to be z zero. But anyway, we get j of x t. Agnostic, agnostic, apatheist, atheist, nihilist, determinist, miserable fuck. <laughs> well, you're smiling in your photo, so you did pretty well. <laughs> um, all right, so J X T is the change in probability for the wave function. And that one is a pretty crazy equation. Uh, that one is going to be... I h bar over 2 by the mass um, multiplied, I've agreed with everything you've said, but that surprised me honestly. Maybe I, my definition is wrong. Ah, uh, well, you know, it's always, it's always word games, isn't it? Like, we, we, I spoke about that on one of my private scopes where we misunderstand each other's words. Um, and sometimes, like, you know, we, we, we mean different things with the same words used. I was doing an, an a critique of Milo Yiannopoulos semantics. Perfect. <laughs> All my talking, one word, semantics. I talked about that a lot in my critique of the Milo Yiannopoulos book, Dangerous, 
Most people fight over semantics. Absolutely. Mr. Ed Murphy, holy crap. Mate, you are on another level, my friend. Um, one over pi to the quarter. One over pi to the quarter. Um, and uh, what do we got? And then we've got two momentum by the mass over, not momentum, sorry, angular motion, all to the 5 over 4. I'm not even going to write the rest. It's a waste. Um, you asked me to moderate your previous comment. I said looks okay. Um, I'm not going to go into it. I'm just going to show it to you because you don't need to know this one. It's not as important. So here, that's the equation. I... Let me try and hold this. I'm trying to hold everything at once, man. It's holding the magnifying glass and the phone and the pen. So minus um, IH, which is I multiplied by H bar over 2M, 1 over pi to the quarter, All right. 2 times angular uh, velocity times the mass over H bar, which is the size of the pixel, of the universe. This is the universal pixel ever in the universe. That's the smallest possible thing of existence. 5 over 4 and then x e to the minus a outside of the modulus of mass by the location squared divided by h minus i by the time and then we've got 2 a m again over pi by h bar to the quarter and then this is the time component right here e to the minus a where did the god particle go? <laughs> i pi x squared, you know, the Higgs boson. Yeah, that, that's not mentioned in this. Um, we do that when we do quantum field theory over h plus i t. All right, so that's one side. But what's the, int what's the interesting thing, right? The components of this probability function, this, this here, we're only using one dimension of space, right? So that, where is the, that x is one dimension of space and, and time. So it's a two-dimensional equation here, but normally it's a four-dimensional equation. But if you look at this, in this universe, right, that's the, that's the space part and that's the time part, and together they make zero, right? Now that's really, really weird. That's, that's really weird, and it only happens in this universe. So there is, when you do the mathematics... Refreshing to intellectual honesty. Gabversity where facts give not a shit about your feelings. That is the plan, yes. <laughs> uh, all right. Basically, you can be white and a dickhead, and you can be brown and a dickhead. <laughs> Dickheadism is evenly distributed, my friends. <laughs> Welcome to Gabversity. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah. Sometimes I'm a dickhead when I have a tan, and sometimes when I go white, you know, it's, it's whatever. It's all good. Um, all right, so what's interesting, male or female? <laughs> it's right, whatever. It works quite well. Um, but also, isn't there slight utility in a bit diplomacy where there's some sensitivity to feelings? That's an interesting point, actually. My brain doesn't see that, but that's why I got kicked out of my scholarship three days ago. Because I was being insensitive to other people's feelings. So I, I would dare say you're right in that sense. Um, yeah. Anyway, so what happens is that the derivative at 90 degrees, right? Not too... The, 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 the derivative, right, in our world, the, they, when you add them together, you get zero. Right? Whereas... In mathematics, there is no reason that that should happen. But for some reason in this universe, only those subset of equations called harmonic equations, which I talked about in the last uh, scope, harmonic equations are the ones that exist in this universe. Why? That's what it is. This universe only allows harmonic equations to exist. But there are an infinite amount of non-harmonic equations that cannot exist in this reality. They exist in like the movie Inception, someone said. That was pretty good. All right, where are we? That's done. Okay, next. All right. Unstable particles. What I think, I think I'm going to end this here because I've had enough. 1.15. What are we up to? Sorry. 1.18. Ah, crap, this is only chapter one.
It's funny, the uni only give us five questions, but I've done like all 18 of them. Um, so screw that. All right, physics pages, H over P. De Broglie Wagler, wavelength. Uh, all right, I'm going to go. Do you understand all the little gray cells need rest? Yeah, I think my tiny little gray cells are done, and I have burnt 300 calories. I'm pretty happy. Thanks for teaching. I'm teaching myself at the same time, so thank you as well. Don't go, mate. <laughs> I Well, mate, you can always subscribe to Patreon, and I'll bring you into my private channel on Gabsmacked. And I always, I, I scope on there like eight times a day. Um, yeah, that's about it. Pleasure, man. Pleasure to talk to you. Actually, I've got to do another topic now on ethics anyway and on astro and on astronomy. So I might do either some astronomy or ethics next because I'm done with quantum mechanics for today. Um, all right. Yeah, that's it. Man, pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Love you guys. I may see some of you on the ethics channel. Ethics is best. Ethics is really popular. You teach middle school. Ah, okay. Let me have a look at Supernova and get to know you. Hello, sweetheart. God, you're gorgeous. I can understand why you probably do well. What college do you attend? I am in Australia and I do my university online at Charles State University. No, don't be silly. I got offered a couple of scholarships. The first one I got kicked out of this week, as everyone knows on YouTube. <laughs> that was pretty fucked. Oh, God. Anyway, astronomy next. Hmm. All right, I'll do astronomy next and then we'll do ethics. Thanks for your scoping. Man, don't thank me. I thank you guys. If it wasn't for you, I'd just be looking at the wall. I can't focus when I'm on my own. All right. Not into physics. <laughs> All right, cool. All right. See you soon. Where facts don't care about your